All right, you guys. So I know it's been a little while since we posted something, and um, a lot of stuff's been going on. Life's been a little hectic lately. Had COVID. I've uh, been working on. Uh, I've got a new part-time job. I say part-time. It's almost 50 hours a week. On top of doing other business stuff and doing the YouTube channel, and we, wife and I moved to a new house, and we've had a lot of stuff just going crazy lately. But big news for the channel. It took a long time of looking and looking for the right one and a lot of different stuff financially to figure out how to uh, <clears throat> make it work the best way and still grow my business that I've been trying to do and everything else. But uh, we finally made it happen. Let's go have a look. We finally got a new boat. I am in love with this thing. I've been working on it <clears throat> pretty hard and heavy for the last couple of weeks now. It is a Tracker Pro Guide V175. Uh, it's a 2019. Uh, um, it's got the 115 Mercury four stroke on the back. I actually ended up, uh, it come with a 70 thrust, regular Minn Kota, I believe power drive. <clears throat> One of the first things I did was take that unit off and I put this new unit on which is a Minn Kota, uh, Minn Kota Ultera 80 pound thrust and it's uh, iPilot uh, which is also self deploy and uh, I love this thing it is amazing still getting kind of used to it but um, self deploys itself and I mean I can just I can control everything from the remote and a lot of people are like, yeah, that's old news, man. But uh, I tell you right now, dude, I'm, I've never had anything like this. And it is a game changer. I will tell you that right now. For the river and navigating any swift water or anything like that, or even just spot locking in, saw, in still water or light current, it's amazing. Uh, the boat overall is extremely awesome. I love this thing. Uh, I can't remember all the numbers off the top of my head <clears throat> but uh this four stroke i love this thing this 115 it pushes this boat around just me with just my gear loaded down we'll get around closer to the lower 30s and then when i load it down with a few more people and more gear mm, closer to 30 like 28 to 30 depending that's usually going up current if i go down current on a river i go a lot faster if i'm on still water uh probably mid 30s uh, definitely around that 30 range maxed out uh, uh, full throttle but um yeah no love this motor uh, love this boat everything's awesome about it uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff another uh, add-on I did almost immediately was the uh, I went with the monster rod holders uh, I love these things they're great I went with the t-bars I was gonna do a rod rack across the back because I do again do a lot of cat fishing uh, here in Missouri is where I currently live and again you guys already have probably know this but my wife and I are planning on in the next year or two hopefully pulling up stakes and uh, calling uh, somewhere in South Florida our home and uh, this will be a great boat to also take on a lot of that salt water down there whether it be I'll probably end up getting a smaller boat some kind of a skiff in the near future to handle some of the um, some of the like the really shallow flats out there but this boat will be great for anything two feet and over i mean it's rated for 18 inches of of uh uh clearance in the water of draft i believe is what you want to call it uh i've had it out really shallow i've fished with it in a foot a half, foot and a half of water two feet of water ish on the river getting up in some shallow water i'll just pull the main motor up uh, kill it pulled up and then I'll drop down the eye pilot and I'll just pull the boat right in there And I mean I haven't had any problems. I haven't gotten stuck with it a single time I've actually fished with it a lot and I just haven't uh, I've taken it out probably around a dozen times now and I've just been learning about it and getting used to it and Learning how to navigate with this deep V. This is the first deep V boat. I've ever uh, owned I have been in a lot of the smaller John boat style DVs so I've got a little experience with them, but this is, like I said, much more massive, much different animal. Um, I know this, I believe this in the, uh, the stern of the boat is over, it's over seven feet wide. I think it's closer to eight foot in the stern, uh, as far as width 
go so it's extremely excuse me extremely stable uh some other things another big thing i did do um is i upgraded and uh, i went with the uh 10 inch uh garmin unit i actually installed that by myself it's on a ram mount which is adjustable and it actually fits behind this single console uh windscreen windshield uh really well and kind of keeps it protected from uh the elements and whatnot so i don't have to worry i know they're supposed to be waterproof but uh just that little extra layer of protection uh yeah pretty self-explanatory i uh didn't go ahead and get the live scope i'll probably get it in the future but for right now i don't think i really need it right now i'm doing a lot of catfishing on the bottom of the rivers and i think it would probably give me a little bit of an edge but right now i just don't think that i need it it's about 1600 dollars for the newest live scope for that bad boy right there and i it's not that i don't have the money for it it's just that i don't think i in my head i haven't prioritized it to justify spending that much on the live scope for that bad boy but that garmin unit i love it i'm in love with it i usually do a split screen i'll do like a nav map on the one side and then i'll do like down imaging on the other side for depth and water temp and marking fish and looking at structure and it's great it really gives me an edge on hunting down some of those bigger fish uh this boat has just got so much room so much storage uh i'm gonna go ahead and hop up in it and show you guys around the inside all right guys this is the inside uh let me hop up on the stern of the boat here and uh this is it man i mean there's just so much room here uh got two swiveling seats in here right now i've actually got a third and then i've actually got four of them i've got three of the regular uh folding seats and then i've got a lean on post which i absolutely hate <laughs> i think those are garbage i always have i do not like them <laughs> but anyway uh, I take the I've got I took the la the rears out because I like all the space to maneuver and usually it's there's not a lot of times where I have more than just one other person with me and there's a lot of times when I'm by myself so uh, yeah that's why I've got the seat situation set up the way I do I don't have anything in the front none in the back none on the rear post I do have the ski line pylon post right here I plan on getting a ski pylon for that guy to uh come above the motor and be able to pull a tube behind it uh, i know it's a fishing channel but i've got family that love to do tubing and stuff like that the wife does my sisters do all that kind of stuff uh but yeah no that's a big thing we're gonna be doing uh so i'm gonna get one of those uh so there's lots of things i love about this boat uh i guess i'm gonna start from i guess i'll start from the front and work my way back um before I start at the front, I am going to say I love these gunnels, how they come all the way around. It's it's kind of a, almost like a saltwater uh, style, but like I love how the skiff, the saltwater skiffs have the gunneling where you can run all the way around the boat. This one obviously has the console where it cuts you off, so you can't go around that side, but you can still run around almost the entire length of the boat without having to get down, taking the step down, and potentially falling, you know, so you can actually, uh, you can actually just run right along these gunnels right here and uh come right up to the front so i really love that i've actually used that quite a bit fighting some good fish on this boat and uh yeah no anyway uh let's start from the front work our way back like i said previously uh i love 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 this altera this thing in my opinion is worth its weight in gold and uh this troll motor runs almost three grand after tax and and everything else and a lot of people are going to pay to have it installed i actually installed this guy myself i was gonna go with a quick attach mount and i decided that i didn't want the extra flex and i didn't actually want to wait for that to come in the mail i was excited to get it on the boat and try it out and i actually end up having the kit already to install it directly so i actually end up uh installing it directly uh but i love 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 this thing I 1000% recommend it. Now I've only got maybe about a, a few weeks uh, down on it. So the one thing that I have yet to see for them is the longevity-ness of how these motors are gonna operate. But as of right now, it is amazing. It operates exactly as promised from Minn Kota. And I'm telling you right now, if you've never had them and used your trolling motor a lot for whatever kind of fishing you do, absolute game changer. 100% and that's come from someone that is 100% honest and got a lot of experience on using troll motors. I've used all of them. 
I've used probably just about every single one Minn Kota makes, and uh, I've yet to use these guys in person. I've seen them work, but I have never actually used one, and I have not owned one because they are so expensive. And I went ahead and pulled the trigger on this guy because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on that guy. Absolutely love it. Um, all right. Don't want to make the video too long here. Um, this guy here. Uh, they're both... Both of these front compartments, you can pot, you can make them live wells. This one is not. Uh, this one right now is just going to be a dry storage for me. I've got drift sock, anchor rope, smaller casting net, landing net. It's actually flying. It's actually my fly net. <laughs> it's been, uh, and then this side, I have to get it fixed. Something is not working in it, and i got to drain it. It's got water in it. It's got my larger casting net. This is my front live well, which um, is piped in but something's not working for it. It wasn't working when I bought it and I actually had not had time to mess with it yet. This little hatch right here is actually, I it was just kind of a extra compartment. I've been using it to store my little anchor in there. I'm planning on getting another anchor, which will be larger. Probably go in the front hatch up there. But um, I you also put the cover of my Garmin unit in there when I'm using the unit. Nothing too fancy. I love this right here, this center rod compartment storage. It's on gas struts. Opens itself up. We've got some new rods in there, some whisker seekers, which you guys are gonna see next video. And uh, in action, they work great. I love them. Uh, realistically, my big rods. If you put them in there right, I've right now I believe I've got one, two, three. I've got four. I've got three lever drags and one bigger open face setup. All catfish rods. They're all set up for with Sandy Cooper rigs on them right now. But uh. Realistically, I would say you could probably get five to six good size rod and reels in here. If you're running bass setups, you could probably get a lot more than that. But anyway, nothing too crazy there. Just uh, oh, also uh, underneath of it, there's another compartment there where you can get to the deep bee. The good thing about the deep bee is it's got all that that deep storage in there, and that's you get to compartment so you can get into the battery compartment and get to the battery. So the batteries are below deck on these guys. Moving on back, speaking of below deck, we've got. Another below deck access here. I keep a bunch of life jackets here. I've got more down there. Uh, there's one of the accessory batteries. The other one is in front of it. You can get to it in the hatch underneath of the rod storage. Uh, yeah, there's lots of room. There's there's lots of room down in here. Uh, there really is. I mean, there's lots of lots of room down there. You can put a lot of stuff down there. The deep bees have got so much storage below deck. I love that about them. They they kind of kill the going super, super shallow vibe. You really kind of are probably going to want to stay in at least two foot of water. But that's still pretty shallow. You can do a lot with that. And I, like I said, I am going to be end up building some kind of small skiff or buying another small skiff in the near future within a year or two because I do like to fish that shallow water. But this was more of the all-purpose boat that I wanted. It's kind of my dream boat. I've wanted one of these for a long time, and we've made it happen. Anyway, moving over to the console. Again, got the Garmin unit. Love this bad boy. This thing is, I mean, a game changer. Really nice. I'll power it up for you guys real quick. Why it's powering up. Just a couple little things. Got them all my switches here, mainly just live wool stuff, bills, stuff like that. Horn. <laughs> Gotta love that gauges nothing crazy keys down there steering wheel feels nice it's got good control it's all factory pretty much from tracker uh i love it it's very tight the motor steering's tight uh the throttle the throttle's tight all the electronics work everything works this boat was practically brand new when i bought it it had very 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 low run hours time on it uh but yeah now that garmin takes a little while to power up but uh now this is this is another kind of um, definitely a uh, key feature of the boat in my opinion. But uh, yeah, the last place I was at was the river, and I'm not in the water right now, obviously. So uh, it's probably not going to show up too good on the camera anyway. But um, anyway, that's that's the Garmin unit. There's not a whole lot there. You can you can go check those guys out. Uh, on YouTube or whatever there's lots of good videos out there for these guys if you're interested in them if you are a hardcore fisherman and you're trying to find the fish and you're trying to friggin and I tell you what I actually use this guy more for than anything 
is navigating foreign water or just navigating water in general because water, especially running water like current in rivers or anything like that is constantly changing. There might be fallen trees, there might be washout, there might have been some rocks fall in the river, some large boulders that, that are now there just below the surface that you can't see and just stuff like that it could save you from tearing out the lower end of your motor or anything like that. But uh, love, love, love that unit. Did a lot of my research, talked to a lot of my friends and family that have got a lot of experience behind that kind of stuff. Ended up going with this Garmin unit. I've actually got some experience with these uh, with friends and, and, and people that I've, I've met and been out on their boats and stuff and messed around with them a little bit. Love, love, love that unit. Highly recommend it. Garmin's one of the best on the market, especially for deep water, which... When we go to Florida, we've seen a lot of. Right now, it's rare that I get anything over 50 foot right now. But eventually, we'll probably be fishing two to 500 foot of water. We'll be doing some offshore videos with that guy. Because this boat could definitely handle some offshore water. I think it's rated for three to three and a half foot chop. And it does take chop very well. I've had it in some choppy conditions. And then we've just got some side compartments here. This compartment, it runs all the way up. But this compartment, I mainly just use for get some tackle and... Some, some plugs and some grippers. I got bait knives in there, trash, towels, a bunch of just ramp stuff, some lights in there, batteries, backup batteries, fuses. This is over here. This is another rod locker. I believe you can use both of those for rod lockers. That one's also got the navigation lights and stuff in it. Uh, I usually just keep like my bait rods. I think I got my fly rod in there. I've got my gall rod, my my big yellow rod. You guys have seen a lot in past videos. I've kind of designated that as a gall rod when I'm in fresh water because it launches baits good and it's got good strong action and it's kind of a trustworthy rod so it's rigged up with this guard rod and i keep it separate from my catfish rods when i go catfishing because you never know and i always keep it rigged up with a plug and a good octopus hook because you never know when you're going to see a big guard come up and you might want to pitch a pitch a piece of cut bait at them or something but yeah it's that uh pretty much not a lot left we've got our live well here pretty good size live well. i can't remember the gallons on it i'm wanting to say 70s yeah it's kind of nasty right now i've been running a lot of nasty baits i've had a lot of shads it kind of smells i had a lot of shad uh perch carp uh you know asian carp common carp i've had a lot of buffaloes in there a lot of bait i usually run bait in this uh if i did catch a big fish in like a tournament or something like that which i usually don't fish tournaments but if i did i definitely could fit a large catfish. it comes about three quarters of the way across and it ends over here. It's actually got a bait well compartment over here. Uh, but this guy, you can just pull him out and then then you can access it. And it goes from, from there all the way over. You know, so you've got a pretty good size live well there. I need to pitch that bait bucket. It does, I don't ever use it. It just gets in the way. The only time I'd see myself using it is if I had some small, like, shiners here. Or if I was in salt water, maybe some glass metals or something. But I rarely ever use baits that small because I'm usually... I usually just don't ever use baits that small and then about three quarters of the way then you've got your cranking battery with all your uh you got your onboard charger a lot of your inline fuses and wiring and stuff is in here just kind of the wiring central thing i gotta get a uh, plano in there with fuses and a fuse puller and stuff just catch you on the water fuse goes out or something that's pretty much it gas fill up here like i said i've got the t-bars on both sides uh I love these T-bars. I love, love, love these T-bars, guys. Um, yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll uh, go ahead and throw the rods in them real quick and uh, let you guys see what it looks like with the rod set up. I've only... Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and throw the rods in them and let you guys look at and see what the rod setup looks like. All right, so that's pretty much the uh, rod rack setup. That's my kind of my basic catfishing setup. I actually, personally... I don't like to run, usually, I don't like to run more than four rods while I'm catfishing because anything over that, I usually just get kind of tangled more often when I get good fish on or whatnot, and I'm just not, you know, now I will run six rods, like if I want to run three and then I've got somebody else that also wants to run separate rods, usually they'll run three, I'll run three, or whichever side, usually I'm on this side because, you know, driver's side and whatnot, but um, uh, I've got my three whisker seekers here. I did end up going a, uh, they're all six sevens. Uh, I'll do a rod review on those guys later. I can just, there's some basic catfish rods. Uh, another catfish rod. Those are kind of the four I use, those three. And then this one right here. 
those are my main catfish rods and then i've got this is my gar i just threw it in for i'm gonna set up for gar i've caught a lot of big catfish on it i caught my last uh big blue cat i caught in the video i did that was the guy I caught on i was set it up and i was actually fishing for blue cats with that rod that day and then um this guy right here is a uh, monster rod holders net love that guy it's the 80. uh we actually landed a really good fish in it the other day which is going to be in a future video that i have not got it up yet uh but love that net love it um but yeah let's step back give you guys a better look at the uh, stern of the boat here but yeah i mean this boat's got so much room i love it way more room than a traditional bass boat or anything like that it's got a lot of the aspects of a lot of different stuff that i wanted it's got a lot of room you can run around it like a skiff it can take on heavy water you know heavy chop unlike a skiff a skiff can't do that but you get that layout in here similar to a skiff but when it is in rough water and you feel unsafe being up high like on a bass boat you can get down in that deep v in that bottom you feel more secure and you're sitting down low it just feels safer you feel better off in really crazy water um if the weather gets crazy and you're in a, out in the middle of a big body of water, you can, that big motor, again, it pushes the boat every bit of 30 miles an hour, usually a lot faster than that, depending on the, you know, situation, but uh, it'll get you back to the ramp really fast. Um, this boat was just built to go out and really, it, it, it was built to take on some rough conditions, and I absolutely love that. And again, I've tested... A lot of people don't go with these boats because especially in this area because they want to go shallow they want to go really shallow and i completely get that but i also know that i'm a versatile enough fisherman and i actually fish a lot of different regions that this was going to be the boat that was going to do the most for me because i'm a lot of the times I'm, I'm out on really big water the missouri river soon we'll be doing some fishing over the mississippi river which is also an extremely big river very dangerous as well as the missouri uh those are just the river sides you know there's some decent sized lakes here uh like lake the ozarks you can get some good really good chop on that lake and then that's just in missouri again we'll be in this boat will end up down in florida more than likely so that's uh obviously you're gonna when you get offshore it's a whole different animal but um anyway yeah enough talking uh just wanted to run down and give you guys a, a rundown of the new boat i wanted all you uh all of the fishing family to be informed on the new boat oh yeah i've got the the swim platform on the back with the drop down ladder uh this boat was also kind of built a little bit to be a family boat too got the ski pile on with the drop in ladder so you can easily jump off into the water swim around for a little while and you can climb back up in if you're not the most athletic person which is good <laughs> i mean even if you are athletic it still could be kind of uh, especially with the deep v you know this thing sets deep in the water but the rails are also high out of the water so that'll be nice just for everyone not just you know but anyway no uh thank you guys for watching man uh yeah i mean it means the world to me i love i love doing this kind of stuff this is this is what i'm all about and uh it's what the channel's all about man uh i i we you know we do it for you guys i want to bring you guys along uh it's not always new boats and big fish i mean sometimes there's a lot of you know real real big trials and errors and and there's a lot of uh hard stuff that a lot of the times doesn't get shown on the camera and sometimes it does you know i've lost a lot of big fish out of this boat that uh did not get put on camera because again was going through some stuff was working on the boat constantly doing stuff and i just wasn't feeling good i was sick for a while and a lot of it just didn't get put on camera but no uh stick in there with me guys i think every one of my videos that i make i'm trying to make just a little bit better i'm teaching myself through this entire process i'm learning on how to edit i'm learning on how to be a better cameraman i'm gonna go buy uh another camera so i can get some more third person shots and angles in for you guys because i know a lot of it's been first person not because i didn't want a new camera or no i didn't need one because financially i just wasn't able to and now i'm kind of getting in a better spot to where i will i am going to get a new camera here extremely soon and i am going to get a new uh drone here pretty soon so i can get some uh, aerial shots for you guys why not only while we're fishing but while we're uh running look explore new water uh scouting uh doing you know all that kind of stuff i want to bring you guys along and i just want to let you guys know i'm devoted to the channel and 
I might not always get a video posted every week or even every couple of weeks, but you guys just subscribe, man. Like and subscribe and keep me motivated and we're going to we're going to get through this, man. You know, I love we're, we just broke over 100 subscribers. It means the world to me. Uh yeah, we might do something special when we get to 1000. We get to 1000, I can I can uh I can uh, let, let me get let, let me let me know you guys start uh, leaving in the comments you know what you guys want to see and uh, we'll uh, we'll try to do what we can you know uh, if you guys want to see like a big gar video we might start going after really hard a big gar but that might have to wait until later on in the year whenever the water starts to warm back up because now we're starting to cool down here pretty soon it's gonna mainly be for this area it's gonna mainly be big blue catfish and deep you know. There's not going to be a lot of a uh, lot else going on here in Missouri, <laughs> Central Missouri. Uh, we've got a few musky lakes actually that I'll probably go try to do. That'd be cool to try to get on a big musky. But yeah, that's it, you guys. Thanks for everything. Glad you come to check out the new boat, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Catch a big one, guys.